Hey guys, welcome to part 3 of my armor build of Astrid from How to Train Your Dragon 3. Before I begin, there are a few things that I need to address. First of all, your guys' support on the last video was amazing. Within the first 24 hours of the video's launch, we got 200 views, which is insane for a channel as small as mine. And speaking of 200, we reached 200 subscribers. And as of filming this video, we're nearly up to 250. So thank you so much and welcome to the family. I also need to mention that everything that you see in this video was either partially or completely made on stream. If you didn't catch it, I stream on Twitch now! You can check it out by clicking the i card somewhere on the screen or clicking the link in the description below. And the last thing I need to mention is that this will not be the last part. I have one more video that's coming out which is all about painting the armor and then we'll be done. I will also be releasing a video for the prop that I'm making for the cosplay which is Astrid's Axe. It's not completely part of this armor series, however if you're interested please stay tuned. And with all of that out of the way, let's start the video. Let's finish the cuirass. I'm going to be making a strap around the back with velcro to attach at the side. Using the same 5mm foam I copied the length and width for the front layers and cut this out once. I then trace this onto foam again, adding an 8cm gap at one end before cutting this out as well. These were attached together using hot glue, and the front using contact. This way the top piece will look like normal and I can trim off any bits for future use if need be. Next is the flight mechanism. I wasn't able to get a very clear reference for this, so this is all I had to go off. I drafted a few templates and traced this onto 1.1cm foam and cut it out. Using this as a reference, I created the shape for the flight mechanism and cut that out of the same foam too. Using my rotary tool, I centered the edges of the band to be smoother. I also centered the edges of the flight mech to have a more diagonally rounded shape. To create the divot in the structure, I traced out a trench and painstakingly sanded the shape down to an acceptable depth. I made small strips of foam to attach the band to the already existing straps. Due to the painting difficulties, only the band will be attached at this time. The sides were then attached to the others using contact adhesive. Let's move on to the crease. There have been many ways cosplayers have tackled this. I decided on a more time consuming and painful tactic. Cutting out the scales by hand and gluing them onto black leggings. Before we could start with that I needed to test my paints. I created 5 paint testing dummies, all soldered. Two additional tests were made to test my primer against a heat sealed foam base and a non sealed foam base. The best results definitely came from the sealed bases, so I highly recommend that. I then went on to test the saturation of my tan paint when against a foam itself or a white base, metallic blue paint versus a matte ocean blue, and a metallic purple paint versus a satin finish purple. Choosing the desired paint outcomes, which were the metallics, I moved on to testing my weathered washes. One wash was a mix of brown paint and water. This achieved a lighter colour within the bevels, but also has little to no effect on the scales. The second washer was a mix of black and brown paint with a few drops of water. This was accompanied by a dry brush of brown onto the scales for a dirty effect. This worked a lot better and achieved a darker look too. I decided last minute to invest in a Plasti Dip spray primer in black, so that I can immediately go on to painting the scales after priming and not worry about the foam colour showing underneath. I won't go into the details here, but I've linked to a video in the description where Kamui Cosplay goes through both primers I'm using. Check it out. Because I didn't know how many scales I would need, to cut out my scales I decided to use my Cricut. I made a quick transparent PNG file where I drew multiples of scales and imported them into my Cricut software. Afterwards I was left with lots and lots of scales. To prime these babies, I lined a piece of cardboard with double sided tape and stuck as many scales as I could to it. This was then blasted with Plasti Dip and allowed to dry. Some of the scales didn't get coverage around the sides. A quick touch up using black paint did the job. Having a reference handy, I marked out the edge of the greaves and how high the skirt was going to be. All I had to do was then place the pattern within these lines. Carefully taking the leggings off, I began my painstaking adventure of repetitively placing, hot gluing and painting every single scale. I found gluing everything first and then painting in sections was the best way to go. This is obviously up to creator's preference though. The paint I'll be using is Deco Art Dazzling Metallics in both turquoise and purple. These are gorgeous colours and made the water sparkle too. My process was to single out a small amount of scales to completely saturate in purple. The rest was covered in turquoise. 
Once layered three times each, I selected four to five scales to have a faint overlay with purple, creating a small gradient effect. Once the first leg was done, I transferred the pattern and kept going, and eventually every single scale was painted. But then I had to weather them. Using a wash of brown and black paint with a few drops of water, I got a scrappy paintbrush and started dabbing on the paint and wiping off the excess. Not only does this make the scales look more realistic, but it also gives them more texture and depth from afar. And they're done. Now for the tassels. To start, I made a quick scale pattern for the panels on a dress, and then built up a pattern for the leather section on top. Both were then traced onto some pattern paper for use later. Let's start with the leather part. I cut out two copies of this on white vinyl, both on a fold so I had a full side on each. On the joint of one side I did a simple stitch to join them together, right sides facing so the seams were as flush as possible. On the second joint I hemmed the edge with the same stitch and added press studs. This way I'll be able to put it on and take it off with ease. Because this part is supposed to be leather, the vinyl needs a paint job. I used brown acrylic paint as a base coat and made a rough texture using crumpled paper towels. I then covered it with a coat of matte varnish so that the paint won't activate again when I did the same black and brown weathering wash I used with the scales on the greaves. Now for the panels. I cut eight identical pieces from the pattern using two millimeter thick craft foam. Using foam clay from Lumen's workshop, I lined each foam piece and sectioned off the center. Each strip was one centimeter wide and two millimeters thick. Using the same technique that I used for the triangles on the tress plate, I patterned out and cut multiple pieces of the same craft foam. I also patterned a piece for the bottom of each panel, so that later I'll be able to add more detail. These were then attached using contact adhesive. Time for more scales! I stayed as true as I could to the references as given, sketching them onto the foam first before soldering. There were quite a few gaps, so I covered these up with some more scales. Per usual, East Peach was given two passes. Next are the greaves. I started by making a pattern by wrapping paper around my leg to make a cone shape before cutting it to attach the ends together. These were then traced onto 5mm foam, cut out twice, and attached using contact adhesive. The seam was sanded with my rotary tool to hide the seam as much as possible. I masked the top half of the cone for my template and I drew on the scale wave design and cut this out as well. This was transferred to 2mm foam and attached with contact. The outside edge was created using many strands of foam clay rolled onto a strip. The rivets were also made out of foam clay. For the scales, I decided to cut out individual circular pieces of foam on a bevel. These were then arranged within the confines of the foam and attached with contact. This took quite a while and I tried to stay as true to the reference as possible. Now for the spikes at the bottom. We'll start with the yellow ones. I made a pattern by layering the bottom half of the boot with painter's tape. From here I faintly sketched out each spike, tracing again with a marker once I was sure and tore it off. These were then placed onto pattern paper so I didn't have the tape sticking to everything. Each pattern piece was folded in half to make equal sides and traced twice onto foam before cutting it out. I ran the middle line on a beveled cut lying inwards. Once cut these were attached using contact. You'll see because of how I cut, the foam will automatically bulge in the middle and make a natural sloping look. I then sanded the seams to have a smoother transition. Once again, these were attached with contact. Small strips of foam were inserted into the gaps to keep them lifted, which were reinforced with hot glue. Next were the blue spikes. Using a make-do template of masking tape, I marked out the point at the bottom, side and top for a single spike and transferred this to craft foam with the same steps as the yellow spikes. I did each one individually until I could attach the two halves together, sand and attach to the larger piece. For the spikes on the side, I created two size templates out of cardboard. For each spike, I traced it twice onto craft foam with a small fold allowance. Essentially, I made a foam sandwich with the cardboard in the middle. After gluing, I folded all the sides onto each other and sanded for a smoother transition. To attach them, I marked out where I was going to place them on the larger piece, cut away the added foam that was needed, and slipped them in using contact adhesive. Next up are the sabatons. I covered one of the slippers I'm wearing using aluminium foil and began coating the parts I wanted covered with painter's tape. Smaller strips allow you to get more detail, so take your time. I drew on the design of the parts I needed and took off the tape. This was then cut into pattern sections, transferred to craft foam, and cut out. The top two sections I decided to touch together for strength. 
To make the grooves, I attached two strips of foam clay, one on the seam and one on the edge for both pieces. There were also small triangular rivets, which I made the same way as the blue and yellow spikes on the grooves. Then I needed to scale. You know the drill by now. Cut and contact. Our last piece are the polyens. I created an oval template using paper and transferred this to foam. I heat sealed and bent the foam into shape over a glass with a heat gun. Using the same oval template, I created an outline for the edges and the scales. These were also transferred to craft foam, cut and contacted to the piece before a quick heat form again. And with that we are done and everything is ready for painting. Of course there are other details like the fabric between the Pauline and Greaves, the bird skulls, all the straps and velcro and attaching the foam to the shoes, but all that has to be done after the paint job. I also feel like I need to be really clear about one more thing. I know that I am by far not the only person who has or is making this cosplay. There are so many other cosplayers doing their own variations, and I've linked a few down below. And because of this, I do need to remind everyone this is my very first armor build. So not everything I do will be the most simple, most useful, or practical way of doing something. Thank you so much, consider subscribing, liking, and check out my Twitch if you want to stay consistently updated with the progress I'm making before everybody else and I'll see you guys in the next video. Keep cosplaying!